Hi, this is Tori St. Cyr and welcome to The Clear and Present Truth. In today's video, you're going to learn the truth about the image Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. Okay, let's get right into today's message because you're going to learn the true meaning of Nebuchadnezzar's image. All right, now, for those of you who are a little unfamiliar with this dream, in Daniel chapter 2, there is a pagan king called Nebuchadnezzar. One night, God communicates something special to this king. But the problem is when he wakes up from his dream, he can't remember what the dream was about. So he called all his wise men who he had on staff. So he had sorcerers and wizards and, and all special type of characters that he believed should be able to tell him what he dreamed. So he calls them together and he says, hey guys, look, I had this dream. Not only do I not know what the dream meant, I can't even remember what the dream was about. So I need you to not only tell me what the dream was about, but then I need you to tell me the interpretation of the dream. And his wise men and sorcerers and wizards are like, uh, uh, sir, uh, we can't do that because we, 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 we don't have that power. And Nebuchadnezzar's like, well, what do you mean you don't have that power? That's your job. You, you only have one job and that's the job. And they're like, well, we could tell you the dream, but you got to tell us what the dream was about and then we can interpret it for you. And King Nebuchadnezzar's not buying it because he's like, well, you're the ones that are supposed to be in contact with the gods. And the wise men are kind of like, oh, oh, well, those gods don't talk to us. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the other gods, they're the ones that you have to tell us to dream. And those are another set of gods that will tell us. But the gods that will tell you actually the, what the dream was about, yeah, we don't talk to those gods. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar then goes into a rage and he says, listen, if you can't tell me what I dreamed and what this dream meant, I'm killing all of my wise men. Now, unbeknownst to King Nebuchadnezzar, he had a few Hebrews on his staff. And these Hebrews, they were not at this meeting, but these Hebrews actually were able to communicate with the true God the God that the wise men were referring to, the one that could tell you the what the dream was about and tell you the interpretation of the dream. That God was friends with Daniel. So Daniel overhears exactly the, the, the command or the decree given by King Nebuchadnezzar. And that decree would also affect him because he was technically one of the wise men. And so he gets Nebuchadnezzar, he gets Nebuchadnezzar to agree to give him one more night. So that night, ladies and gentlemen, God gives Daniel the exact sequence of events that happened in the dream that Nebuchadnezzar saw. And not only does he do that, but he also gives him the interpretation of the dream so that Nebuchadnezzar understood exactly what God was trying to communicate to him. Now, the question is, what does that mean for you and I today? You see, ladies and gentlemen, what you must understand is the dream that God gave to Nebuchadnezzar wasn't just for Nebuchadnezzar. The dream was for you and it was for me. So what was the actual dream? Well, ladies and gentlemen, today you're going to not only know what Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about, but you're going to understand what God was trying to communicate to the king. So here's what Nebuchadnezzar saw. You see, God opened up the future to King Nebuchadnezzar and he saw an enormous statue of a man and the statue seemed to be glowing. It had light glowing all around it and it was very frightening to see. Now the head of the statue was solid gold and its chest and arms were made of silver. Its belly and its thighs were made of bronze and his legs were made of iron and its feet were made partly of iron and partly of molded clay. Now, while Nebuchadnezzar is watching the statue 
a huge boulder breaks off a mountain without anyone touching it and it propels toward this image and it basically hits the image and breaks it up into small fine little pieces and then the wind blows and it blows all the pieces away then that boulder gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it fills the whole earth wow what a crazy dream right now the question is what does all of this mean well the bible tells us exactly what it means you see in daniel chapter 2 verses 37 and 38 the bible says you o king are a king of kings for the god of heaven has given you a kingdom power strength and glory and wherever the children of men dwell or the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. So now here we see that the head of gold represents King Nebuchadnezzar. But you must understand that it doesn't just represent King Nebuchadnezzar on its own. It represents the Babylonian Empire, the kingdom which Nebuchadnezzar ruled over. All right. Now, so today... If we were to locate this Babel, this city of Babylon, it will be somewhere located in the nation of Iraq. One key piece you have to understand is found in verse 38, which says, wherever the children of men dwell, he has given them into your hand. What you must understand is that every nation that Nebuchadnezzar saw on this image represents a world ruling power okay it can't represent joe schmo pops mom and pops uh, a kingdom around the corner it must be a world ruling power at some point okay so that's a principle that you must understand all right now now let's get into the very next kingdom in verse 39 it says but after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours so if the first metal represented Babylon, which was gold, then the silver would represent the empire that came immediately after the Babylonian empire fell. And that kingdom is found in Daniel chapter five and verse number 28. Notice what the Bible says. Your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. So now we must understand that the very next kingdom that would overtake and rule the world was the Medo-Persian Empire, okay? So when we look at the statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed, the head of gold represents Babylon, the arms and chest of silver represented Medo-Persia. Are you with me thus far? Now, what you must understand is the Medo-Persian Empire was basically a co-op between two separate nations, all right? now. Uh, one was the Median and the one were the, the Persians. Now, eventually, history tells us that the Persians actually became superior over the Medes at some point after they overtook Babylon. But for now, we know that the, the next empire was Medo-Persia. All right. Now, if we were to find Persia today on a map, it would be located in the nation of Iran and the Medes will be somewhere around southeastern Turkey, all right? So that's the Medes and that's the Persians, all right? But as a joint empire, those two nations were the second nation to rule the world. Then Daniel chapter 2 continues by saying, Then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over the earth. In order to understand the third empire to rule the world after the Babylonian Empire, after the Medo-Persian Empire, we simply have to ask ourselves, what nation conquered the Persian Empire? Well, the Bible tells us what nation would come after Persia. In Daniel, the 10th chapter and verse number 20, notice what the angel told Daniel. Then he said, do you know why I have come to you? Now I must return to fight with the prince of who? Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed, the prince of who shall come, ladies and gentlemen? The prince of Greece will come. So now we understand 
it was the Greek Empire that ruled the world after the Persian Empire fell. So now we understand who the belly and thighs of bronze represent. It represents the Greek Empire. So who do we have thus far? We have the head of gold, which represents the, Babylon, the Babylonian Empire. We have the arms and chest of silver representing the Medo-Persian Empire. And then we have the belly and thighs of bronze, which represents the Greek Empire. You're doing great, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's look at the next piece on the image. We come to the legs of iron. Now, in order to understand who the legs of iron represent, you must understand that the name of this empire does not exist in the book of Daniel. Daniel did not name the empire that would come after the Greek empire. So if the Bible doesn't tell us who came after the belly and thighs of bronze, we now must use a little history to determine what nation ruled the world after Greece fell? Ladies and gentlemen, a review of history will reveal to you that the empire that came upon the scene after the Greek Empire fell was none other than the Roman Empire. The same empire that crucified Christ. The same empire that destroyed Jerusalem. That empire was the fourth empire to rule the known world. It is this empire that Daniel would proclaim would be as strong as iron and it will break in pieces and bruise. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it was the Roman empire that subdued the known world. But you must understand that at some point the Roman empire could not contain its cohesion. In other words, even the Roman empire began to break down. Now ladies, and, now, ladies and gentlemen, while Rome was breaking down, in the midst of this breakdown, I mean, it took centuries for this to occur, but while Rome was breaking down, it legislated or it converted to Christianity. And Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. But what you must understand is that as Rome began to convert and legislate to Christianity, its leaders, its church leaders began to obtain civil powers. And so as the church became more influential, its power began to increase. And ladies and gentlemen, the church began to rule or begin to have powers over the state. Today, we would call that church the Roman Catholic Church. And what you must understand is that the Bishop of Rome became the head of the church. And he didn't just control the church, he controlled the state as well. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, in the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw, the clay was mixed with the iron because the clay represents the papacy being infused into the state of the Roman Empire. So the clay represents the Roman Catholic Church. Now, let's review and make sure that we understand everything that we studied thus far. When Nebuchadnezzar saw the image in his dream, the head of gold that he saw represented the Babylonian Empire. The arms and chest of silver represented the Medo-Persian Empire. The belly and thighs of brass represented the Greek Empire. The legs of iron represented the Roman Empire. And the clay found infused into the feet of iron represent the Papal Roman Empire. Now we have to ask the question, what did the toes represent? And what was this boulder that hit the image that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed? Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're not gonna believe this, 
but these two components this boulder and these feet of iron and clay they represent something that you'll find out in a later video but I want to thank you for watching and now you understand the clear and present truth of Nebuchadnezzar's image.